Welcome once again to this YouTube channel. Today we're gonna see how we can develop a form that you see right here. It's an employee form, which takes the ID, the name, the date of joining, the nature of employment, whether it is permanent or temporary, then we can do a number of actions and search for a record just like that. For example, where I know the ID, I type in the ID here, click search. It will go into my sheet here and search for the record, like 127, I search for 127, which is the last record here, Godfrey, and populated it here. If we want to clear all that is here, we can clear, click on clear, and everything is cleared. If you want to add a record, uh, like so, whatever name we type there, double click here, we get the drop down for the date and click add. It gives us a message, record has been saved. I say, okay, that record has been saved. With the, this is our record that has been saved here. So we can search for it. So 128, click on search, and it displays that particular record. Now we can also edit this record. If I made a mistake, I type TTT instead of Timothy, instead of Tom, I can do that. Click on edit. That record has been saved. Now, if I bring back that same record, if I go here, I can see the TT has been saved. Or I can search for it and see that it has been edited. Now, if I no longer want this record, I can delete it, search for the record, first of all. Then after that, click on delete, it runs the script, then the record will be deleted. So if I go into my, you can see the record has been deleted. So this is what we're gonna be doing in this video. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe. First of all, I have a blank sheet here for this sheet form. For the next one, data. In the data form, that's where I'm gonna put my data. And in the form sheet, this is going to be the form that I use to add a record, to edit a record, to delete a record, and to search or clear the fields. Now, I'm not going to waste a lot of time in design, but I'm going to borrow from this here. I copy this. If at all you're interested in design, please leave a comment. Then I can consider that. Then when I come back here and I highlight these rows, and I go to resize, I can see the size is 45. Then the first two, 178, okay. So let me go and set that one up. This row, right click here, resize. This is 45, press OK. Go to size, this is a way of resizing. Make it that size. I think this was something like that. I don't want to waste the time on design. I'll use more time on the actual Thing. This is 127, then come here, resize 127, like so, reduce this one here, and I think this one is a little, let's check this one. Size is 49. 
Let's come here. Change this one to 49. There are these buttons that we need to set up. The add button, edit and delete. Go under insert, drawing. Go under shapes. Then you draw your shape here. Right click, use the word add. If you want to change the color, you can change it to that. Change the color of the text, white, center it. Make it bold. After this, you can save and close. So um, in the similar way, I'm going to create the other buttons. I don't want this video to be long, but I'll use the same approach. Now I've developed all the buttons that I need. I need an add button, edit, delete, clear, and search. So that is done out of the way. The next thing is we're going to into the code and see how we can develop these functions. So the first click on extensions, then up script. It's going to open this code editor here. And this is what we're gonna use. So the first thing is I'm gonna define all the variables that we're gonna be using. So I'm saying constant, which means the variable is constant. First of all, I need to access the sheet. And to access the sheet, that is the spreadsheet app, I need to go to the spreadsheet app, then get active spreadsheet, like so. Then after that, I need to access let me increase this. Maybe it's quite small for your eyes. But I need to access the form sheet. And to do that, I need to go through the spreadsheet, which I've created here, then get sheet by name. Sheet by... this one here, and the name of the sheet is called form. You have to ensure that the name that you put here is exactly the name that we have used here. This is the form. So we are getting this sheet here. Now I need to get this data sheet because I'm also going to need it. So the first step is to define the variables that you're gonna use in your code. So I'm saying form is data sheet like so equals to, I go to the spreadsheet and get sheet by name. And the name is called data This is the one that we have seen on this one here, okay? So we have got this. First of all, we got the spreadsheet, which is the entire document through going through the spreadsheet app, which is this first one here. Then number two, we created the spreadsheet form, which is this form here, this one here, you see. Then number three, the data sheet, which is the sheet right here. And if you want more information about how you get to know these functions, you need to access the docs in Google. 
and look for the docs for upscript. They'll show you how to define these as well. Mm -hmm. Now, the next thing I want to define is the cells that I'm going to use. And this is going to be an array of cells, which will be B2. Let me confirm that. I'll need to, some data is going to be placed in this cell B2, B3, B4, B5, and B6. So I need to define these ones as well because later on, I'm gonna use them to extract that data. And also when I'm clearing my fields, I'll also use these ones, these cells as well. So B5, and then lastly, B6. So I go here, comma, specify, B6, like so. I can save, control save. Now I've defined the variables that I'm gonna use. Uh, the next step is to define the function that I'll be using to add records. So to define a function, we use the keyword function, then our brackets, open and close the brackets right there. This is one of the functions we're gonna use. The other function we are gonna use, let me define all the functions, edit record, which shall be used to edit the record. The add record function will be used to get data from the cells here and populate them into our sheet here. And we shall be using this button here. Then the next button we shall be using is the edit function. And the work of the edit is to, first of all, we shall have to use the search button to search. Then when the data is populated here, we edit it. Then press the edit function the edit button. When we press the edit button, it will go and run the edit function right here. The other function we shall need is the function to the delete a record. And how shall we delete the record? The way it will happen is if you want to delete a record, we shall need to search for it. I will search for it. It is displayed here. Then after it is displayed, we click on delete function, delete button. Now this delete button will go and run the delete record function right there. Now the other function I'll need is the search record function. I'll call it search record. And the other function I'll need is the clear button record, which is clear like so. Now this one will be attached to this button here. When you press this button, it will go into upscript and run this function here. The code that is going to be run, we are going to, in the moment, uh, code it inside this. Mm -hmm. One for the add button, which I'll put it under the add record. The one for searching the record, which I'll put it under there. Clearing record, we are put it under this edit, which I'll put it there and delete a record, the code we shall put it under here. Those are the functions that we shall need. Then I'm going to get back and we are gonna start with the add record. Now to add the record, we need to think about what we need to do. So first of all, to add a record, before you add a record, you need to type the ID, the name, the date of joining, and 
you need to specify whether the staff is permanent or temporary using this drop down here. If you don't know how to create this, I have a video on how to create a drop down. Please watch that video. I'm not going to go it, into it here. Then after we have pressed our records here, then we press this add button record. Now, when we press the add button record, it is going to pick the information and populate it in the sheet here. So the first step we are going to do is to pick the information from these different cells. So how do we pick the information from the different cells? And remember, we are using, we need to go to this form sheet, which we have defined up here. Now, even before that, we also need to define other variables that we shall need. We shall need a variable for the ID. We shall need a variable for date of joining. We shall need a variable for, uh, and I'm picking these variables from here. I'll need the ID. I need the date, the name. So I need a variable for the name. A variable is used to score to store the record that we shall be picking from this cell here. The variable for ID will be used to store the value we pick from here. The variable for name will be used to store the information that will be here. Yeah, so we need to store that information before we save it. Okay, so we need the variable for date of joining then nature of employment and maybe the raw ID. I'll abbreviate it as that. Then we also need another variable. This is how you define your variables, raw ID and press a comma. The next thing we are gonna do, we are going to go to this add record function and say, okay, the ID, we are gonna use the sheet. The sheet is this sheet. To get the ID, we need to go to this sheet, which I can copy here. It is called form sheet dot. We need to get the range. And the range there is B2. Now, when we, we get the range there, we need to get the value that is in that B2, like so. I hope you're following what I'm doing. To get the ID, I need to go to the sheet. I've defined my sheet form sheet up here. Then use a function called get range. Get range takes me to B2. B2 is where the ID is located. And then get use the function called get value. And that one will return the ID that is in there. If at all you want to confirm what is going on, I can go to this cell and I type 125 in that cell, like so. Then I go back to this. By the way, I need to name my project here, employee, maybe system. You can give it whatever the name you want. So remember, I've put 126 here. Then I go back to this function. Now, to see, to display what I've recorded here, to see whether my function is working right, I can come here. There's another function called console.log, 
what it does, it logs out the result of ID. I put in the ID, then do like this. Um, so let's see, we can debug this by logging out the ID. So let's see whether we can return the value that I've placed here, which is 126. So I'll come here and here to display all the functions. I want, I'm running this function add record. I click on it. Now when I, there's a run selected function, maybe let me save that. Then if I run the selected function, first of all, it is going to ask, uh, it requires me to give it permission. I'll click on that, go to advanced, go to unsafe here, then say allow. And there you go. So it runs and gives me 126. So I've been able to pick this 126 from here. And uh, I also wanted to try out something here. Uh, I have here something called cells. Maybe I call this one a constant. Why I call it a constant means that I'm not going to assign it again, but these variables I'm going to be reassigned. So I use the let. Constant means it is a constant variable. It is not going to be reassigned. So I wanted to try out something. If I go to cells, then I pick the first one here. And so this is in position zero. That's the funny thing. It starts counting from position zero. Okay, my B2 is in position zero. This is position one, position two, three, and four. So I wanted to try out this and see whether I'll get my result. And there you go, it still works. So you can come here and specify either cell B2 in brackets, or you can say, go to cells and get the value in the first position. So when you do that, you'll be able to return the 126 that we have put here. So likewise, we can do the same for the others. I don't want to waste a lot of time on this. So I'm going to copy paste. Now my next variable is going to be name, then date of joining. I'm using these variables here. Then the next one is nature of employment. So uh, the name is in cell B3 and it is in position one. So we count from zero. This is zero. This is one, two, three, four. So this is position one. This is position two. This is position three. So if you want to see the results of these, we can log them up by putting commas here and, and typing our variables like so. Now, to test that I'm getting my results, uh, I need to format this into a date. So I go to format number into a date. Now the advantage of formatting it into a date is when you double, double click on it, it brings you this drop down, And then instead of typing the information, you can just pick from the drop down like so. So I've filled this, I've filled this, I've filled that and that. Now I want to cancel log those variables to check whether they are working fine. I'll go here, I'm going to run the add re record function. So I say run. So when it runs, it will come here, pick the values from those cells and then display them right here. So I click run. 
So you can see it has displayed the 126, which is this record, Rob, which is the name, which is this one. And then this is my date, and then also permanent stuff. So the first step is to pick the values. And if you want to put comments on what your code is doing, you just say, pick values from the cells, like so. The next, what we're gonna do next is to use the sheet that we have here, which is called the data sheet. We have picked the values. That is the first step. We have picked the values here. Now we want to transfer those values to this sheet here and append them right here. So what we are gonna do, let me first give my sheet uh, headers. The first one would be the ID, then the name, then Next, we have date of joining. Next, we have nature of employment. Nature or employment type. Let's just call it type. So I highlight that, bold that. So this is what we have. So what we want is to pick this information so that when we, after we have picked it, and we have picked it using uh, this, this data here, we have tested it, it is working. Then next is to, when we press this button, we are going to link this button to this function so that when we press this button, it will go and run this function this function will pick the values. After picking the values, it will append those values into the data sheet. That's what, that will be our next step here. So, it is, so we have picked the values. Then next, we need to uh, append those values into this sheet right here. So that's what we're gonna be doing in our code. So let's go, go in and append. So we are going, where are we going to append our values? We're going to append our values in a sheet called data sheet, which we have defined here. So we need to get that sheet. After that sheet, there is a function called append row that you see here. You open the bracket and you can see it takes an array. When you see square brackets, you know that is an array. So we specify our array. Now what we are going to put inside here is what we want to be appended. The first item we want to be appended is the ID. And our ID is stored in this here. Then we put comma. The next item we are going to append is the name. We pick our name. Then the rest of the items, comma, the date of joining and this. So this is what we are gonna do. So having done this, let's test whether and see whether our function is working fine. So I'm gonna go here. Now I need to link this button to this function here. So I'm going to copy this so that when they are linked, so that when I press this button, what will happen will be it will run this code here. It will go and pick the values, store them in these variables. I need to 
and comment this, store those variables, bring those variables and load them here. And then they will be displayed in, they will be appended to this sheet. That's what is gonna happen. So how do I connect my button to this function? So I go, I'm gonna copy the name of function. I go to my spreadsheet, there are these three dots. I click on them. There is edit, delete, assign script. This is what we want. We click on assign script. What script do you want to assign? What I copied, I'll paste here, control V. This is the script I want to assign. Then I say, okay. So when you do that, now this button is connected to this script. So the moment I click, so the moment I click on this button, where's my button? The moment I click on this button here, it is going to transfer, it is running my script, you can see here. Now, after running the script, it has transferred this data to the data sheet. Let's check whether that one has worked. Boom, that's okay. You see it has transferred our data to the data sheet. That is wonderful, it is working fine. Now, when it transfers the data, we need to clear this form. So we need to write the function that is gonna clear this form. Now let's clear the form. And as I developed a function here called clear form, this is what I'm gonna use. Now, what I'm clearing is on a sheet called form sheet. If you remember this one here, that's where I need to go. And what I'm clearing is in these cells here, the, the values in these cells here. So I need to run a function on those cells. A function is called for each. So for each of those cells put in brackets, what do we want to do? What we want to do, open and close your curl braces. So what we want to do is get to the form, the form is called form sheet. Go to that form sheet right there. Get the range. Get the range of that cell, which is my cell here. This is now my B, my B2, okay? And then set the value, set the value. This one here. Set the value to an empty space. So this is the function that we are gonna use. Now, what this one does, because it this is cells, it is going to, the, when it runs the first time, we are saying for each, for each of the values, we have B2, B3, B4, B5, B6. For each of those, go to the form sheet, get that range, this one gives you, this one takes you to that cell. When you reach that cell, set the value to nothing. This is the purpose of this function. Now to call this function, we need to call this function after, after we have appended our data, we need to call the function clear. 
And to call that function, all we need to do is to type this here. Pick this and bring it here. Okay, so this, so what will happen now? I click my button here. It's going to come and run this script. That button is connected to this to pick the information, append it to the data sheet, then go back to the sheet, the form sheet, and clear the records. I've shown you how to write this. So let's see whether it is working. Let's add in one to seven. Type the name as Bob. Double click here. Pick the date of joining. Now make this one temporary. Now I'm going to click add. When I click add, it's going to pick this data, load it here, come back and clear this sheet here, and then it will be ready for the next action. So let's check it out. Click, it is saying running script, as you see, it has finished running the script. The data has gone away. Let's confirm, there you go. It has loaded here, then cleared this form. Now we are ready for the next one. You can say Jen, then date of joining, double click, pick this one, employee, permanent, click add. It runs the script. It adds it to this form, this data sheet here. That is well and good. So the next thing I want to do is the next thing I want to do is when it has cleared, when it has saved, I want a message to pop up. And that message should say transaction saved. So let's see how we can achieve that. And I can do that maybe immediately here. Maybe here, let's say, Display dialogue to say record has been saved, okay? Now to do that, there's a utility we can use. It is called browser. We go there, click on a dot. You see it gives you button input box message box, we want a message box. The first argument is the title. Maybe we shall just call it an alert. The next argument is the message that we want to display. We say record has been saved. Then the next is the button. So we say browser, then we click on button. And I think we choose, okay, the nature of button, the button that you want to appear on, on that display. We just want an okay uh, button. So that when we clear it, we click on it, it will go away. So having done that, let's go back now and save another record and see whether our message is going to be displayed and our sales are going to be cleared. So here I have 128. So let me come here and say 129. The name is Anne. The date of joining, I double click on that, select any date. This is an, a permanent employee. So let's click and see whether it works. There you go, record has been saved. Say, okay, this one is cleared. Check here, our record has been saved. That's wonderful. Now, 
I want to display this ID in one of these cells so that I know the current uh, ID uh, that has a record so that I don't have to go back uh, and check the ID uh, and also repeat an ID. So to do that, I'm gonna use the query function. If you don't know how the query function works, I have videos on how the query function works. Please search my channel, you'll get into that. So the data, I'm gonna say, pick this data, comma, run a select statement, which is say select A, I want this column here, select A, uh, then after I've selected A, I want to order by, by A, in put it in descending order, then limit, limit by one, close my brackets, Okay, uh, limit by one, so order by, let's repeat this. I'm gonna say select A because I want the value in this column here. So you can see when I say select A, it brings all of them, but this is not what I want, I just want the last value here, so that I know the current ID. Select A, then I say order by A limit one. And when I order, it has to be in descending order like so. So when I do that, I get 129, which is the last ID here. So if I know the last ID is 129, you can he come here and say the next one is 130. Next, we're gonna see how the function, how we can. Next, we're going to look at the search function. What does the search function do? We need to put here an ID 127 or 128. After pressing enter, then when we press the search button, it will go into this database and pick the 127, the data with ID 127, and then come and populate it here. That's what we want to achieve. So let's see how we go about it. We're gonna go to extensions, then click on upscript, then it's going to open up this sheet here. As you remember, I created a number of functions. So the function that we're gonna use I named it search record. So the first thing we're gonna do is using the ID to search a record. Now, when we have got that record, then we need to populate it into these values here. So let's see how we can get the record. So I'm gonna say constant, and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna filter values. So I'm gonna say filtered data like so is gonna be, uh, before even I go here, I need to get the values, all the values in this sheet of data. So I'm gonna say constant data, data is gonna be, uh, I need to access the sheet where the data is. And this sheet, I called it data sheet. So I type data sheet. Then when I, I reach the data sheet and I need to get, is it the data range? Then I say get values. So when I do that, this one is gonna give me all the values in that sheet. If you want to confirm that, you can use the console log. Then you log out your data. 
Let's first uncomment this. I want to be sure that my function is working fine. So I select the search function here, I run it. And there you go. You can see it returns the data, the ID column, and it is an array of arrays. So there's this outside square bracket, then there's an inside square bracket. One row, then the next row, and so on. So that's how it brings it. So my data is coming through this. So the next step is to filter that data and to filter the data, I'm calling it filter here. So I need to go to this data, use a function called filter. So when I filter the data, I'll return a row. Each time it runs through, it's going to run one by one, first row, then second row, then third row. Then in each of these rounds, it is going to return a data called row. Again, if you want to confirm what is happening, if I print out row here quite quickly, I save this, you can see what I mean. So each, each time it runs, when it runs the first time, runs the first time it picks this row, runs the second time it picks this row, then third time it picks that row. So for each of these rows, we need to filter out uh, the row ID 127, okay? So for each of those, we need to return, use the word return, the data where the row, if I say row square bracket zero, it's going to pick the first item. If I say one, in, the, in that row, it picks the second item. So the numbering is from zero to one. And of course, if you don't understand what I'm saying, just say, if I do like this, and I cancel log that, you can always use the cancel log to confirm what is being printed. Mm -hmm. If I do like this, and then I cancel out this, and then I run this function. Okay, you see what I mean? When it runs the first time, it returns ID, runs the second time, it runs 126, then 127, then one that. So I need to check where the value that is returned is the same as what we have pressed in this cell here. Here we pressed 127, so I need to get that point where the values are the same. And when they are the same, I want to return the result. And the way we return the result, we normally say return are this where it is equal to this one will give me each of those results, but at the point where the each of those results is equal to what I've placed in this form, in this cell B2, how do I get that? I need to get to that sheet, and I called it form sheet dot get range. I need to get the range for B2, Y B2 because I'm trying to compare with this value here. So I go to this cell, then I get the value there using the function get displayed value or get value. So what I'm saying is where the value from this data that I'm filtering is equal to the value in this return that data and place it in this variable called filtered data. Okay, so let's check it out. We're gonna say filtered data. We're gonna say log this out and see whether we're returning the filtered data for 127. 
seven. So when I do that and save, and I run my query once again, you're gonna see that 127 is data is being returned. Okay, let's, uh, let's stop that, then run it again. There you go. Now, this is the data that we are receiving. Now, when you observe this data, it has two square brackets. So when I say square bracket zero, it will return me the inside square bracket. And when I say the inside square bracket again, I put a zero, it is going to return this ID. Okay. Now, having got this, we need to go to our cells. And remember, our cells is the array, the range. It is this one here, which has B1, B2, B3, and B4, the cells. And these cells are these cells here. This is B2, B3, B4, B5, B6. Those are the cells. So I'm going to go to each of those cells. And I use another function called each for each. And for each of those, I want to get each of those cells, which I'm going to sell cells. Okay, which I'm going to say cell actually. I need a bracket there. So for each of those cells, and again, if you want to see uh, what is happening here, So I'm going to go to each of those cells as I then I say for each. So I'm going to look through one value at a time. And I'm going to use in each of those cases, get the cell value. Use the arrow function. And because I'm putting it on multiple lines, I need to use the carry braces. So if I do cancel log dot log. I want to show you that what, what is being returned so that you're clear on what we are doing. Let's stop this. So let's run this. You're gonna see it returns B1, B2, B3, B4, and so on. And if I put another, I put comma I and also print out I, that will be the index of the same. So it's going to bring the B2 with I. So B2, zero, B3 with one, B this. So I'm also going to use this in my function. So now we know what is being returned. And what we are going to say is, uh, Now the next step is we have got our data which is already filtered. Now the next step is to get that data and populate it into these cells here. And those cells here, we have seen they are being returned by this word cell and the I is the index. So we need to go to the form sheet here and to get there, we go to form sheet. Then to get the range, location of the cell, that is get range. And as I showed you when I printed the cell, it returned me B1, B2, B3, B4. So the cell will be this cell here. Now, after I've got the cell, I need to set the value of that cell. And where do I get the, the, the data for the cell to be set? I'm gonna get it from this filtered data. So it's a filtered data. And I told you it returns uh, an array of array. So when I say zero to give me the outside one, 
Then the next one is I. I saw I showed you the index is zero, index one, index two. So we want to get data at position I. So with that, I believe our data is going to be populated. So let's go to the sheet. We have 127 here. And let's run the search function. It has run successfully. And there you go, you can see it is populating our values correctly. So let's change to 128 and go back and run the search function. Let's run, there you go. And when you go to our data here, 128, the name is Jen Permanent. Okay, Jen Permanent and everything is fine. So the next step is to connect this button so that we don't run it from this here. Here you run it when you're coding, but if you have a finished product, you need to connect this to this function here. And to do that, we need to copy this, the name of the function, come here onto the button that we want to connect it to, we right click, we click on these three buttons, assign script, paste the name of the function, then say, okay. Now having done that, I don't need to go back to my query, to my app script. I can now select 126. So I need to search, I need to type 126 here, press enter, then click on search, then it runs, then it is populated. I can just do 130, press enter, search, and there you go. So our search function is fully functional and it is working fine. So next, we are gonna look at edit. Now to edit our values, first of all, we are going to first get those values that we want to edit. In case you want to edit a value, you'll always come to your form here. If I want to edit 128, press enter, I'll search for the record. Then it appears here. Then I can be able to amend Jen to whatever I want to amend it to. Then I press edit. Edit function will be, this edit button will be linked to this edit function and then it will edit the record. So to, to uh, do that, we need first of all, get the records that is gonna be edited. So to get the records you are going to type here, we need to get these records from here. So I'm going to store them in an array, then use that array. Uh, I'm going to create a new array called, uh, I'm going to say constant new vals as initiate it as a new array. Okay, like so. Then uh, my values are in my cells. You remember my cells right up here, I defined uh, these cells, these ones here, B1, B2, up to B, whatever, which are these, this is, these are the cells that are holding our values. So I'll come back to this and say, for each of those values in those cells, get the cell value. And my objective is to push them into this array here. So I use my arrow function. So I'm gonna say new array dot push. What this does is it's going to push each of these uh, cell values into this array. And to get the values in those cells, I need to go to the form sheet. I need to get this sheet, called, which I called form sheet. Then I get the range. 
and my range is the B, B2, B3, B4, which are stored in these cells here. So it gets the first one, first runs to get B2, So I go to the sheet, I get the location of the cell. And after getting the location of the cell, you need to get the value in that cell. So you need to learn the order on how it works. So this one, what I've done is going to get the values from these different cells and press them in this array I called new values. To confirm that whatever you're doing is right, you are going to console log those new values like so. So I specify the function I'm going to run in, then I run it. And you're going to see that my new values, this, this, and this, are being returned right here. Now, Having got these values, I have my values and they are stored in this. I need to now update my sheet here with those new values. And remember, I have the column ID, which is the same as uh, E4, this number four is the same as this number here. So when I say E, the column ID, I'll be referring to E4. Okay, so now to update my sheet, I need to go to this sheet here, the data sheet, and I access it through data sheet. When I get to that sheet, to update the value, I need to first get the range. Now, the range I want to get, in this case, it can be A1, or A2, B2, those are the ranges I have to get. So I need to, if I'm getting the first one here, it has to be A. Now I need to concatenate or add there uh, the reference for the row. And that row is in my row ID, it is in this, this one here. Yeah, which is the row ID, which is the last value uh, in these cells. So I got how many values? One, two, three, four, five. And arrays start counting from zero. So it will be zero, one, two, three, four. So, uh, and that value will be returned as a text, but I need to turn it into an integer by using the pass function, pass function, then open your brackets. Now in this array, it is stored in this array here, which is new values, and it is at position four as I have shown you. So this one gives me the cell range. I get my data sheet. I locate the cell range that I want to update. Then lastly, I update the cell by saying set value. And I want to uh, update A1. I want to update A1 with my ID. Now my I, all my values are, are stored in this new values. So to get the first one, it will be new values. Array start from zero, so I specify zero. I hope you are getting me. If you are not following me, if I print out console log, new values, if I do this, as I showed you previously, so the first one will be position zero, position one, position two, position three, position four. So in my code, uh, the row ID, the row number is zero, one, two, three, four. This is position four. Then if I'm, I, I'm updating the ID, 
to be a position zero, okay? So that's why I put here four, that is the row ID, that is A4, then set values, I'm updating to the value that I stored here and it is in position zero. So I'll copy this and repeat this four times. Why is it four times? It is because I'm updating four cells. The first, second, third, fourth. There are five actually. One, two, three, four, five. That is if you want to update this as well. So now the next one, the getting the cell range to be column B. Next one, now we are updating this, which is in column B then column C, column D, column E. So this will be column B. The row will be the same, but now the value will be in position one. Then we do the same. One, two, three. This will be column C. Now the value will get it from position two. Then column D, the value we get it from position three, then column E, and the value we get it from position four. So when you do that, then we should be able to update our values. Okay, so let's test run it. I come to my form. I'm gonna pick one to seven, press enter, search. The record is this. So I want to say Bob updated. You can even change this one to maybe 10th. Let's change him to permanent, but you cannot change the row ID. You shouldn't change this one because this one is already is a permanent one, it's a unique one and permanent. So I've changed this. Now I want to go back to my function here. I run, I select the edit record, then I run it. Then I need to go and see whether I have updated the 10th permanent. So when I come here, you can see it's 127. Stand permanent and the record is updated. Now the next thing is to connect this, this function here to my edit row function. So to do that, as previously shown, I'll need to copy the name of this function, go to my button, click on those three buttons, assign record and say, okay. So now my button is assigned. Now I don't need to go back to app script to update. All I have to do, can say update to, and change this one to fast, change it back to temporary. After that, then I say edit, lands my script. Then I come back here. You can see it has changed to edit to. So my edit function is working fine. The next thing we're gonna do is delete a record. Now to delete a record, we are gonna use this function called delete row row. Now for us to delete a row, what do we need? Uh, we're going to use the data sheet function uh, we're going to use the data sheet. We're going to delete from this data sheet. So we need to access that sheet. And to access it, we call it data sheet. And then uh, if I put a dot, there is a function called delete uh, row here. And this function takes the row position as an index. So in other words, if I put uh, two, it is gonna delete row two. If I put three, it's gonna delete row three. So in our case, uh, the data that we're gonna be, that we want to delete, uh, for example, if it is 127, the row number is three. 
as you can see right here, uh, row three. So what we need to do is to get this value here, the row ID. And uh, to get that row ID, so I'm gonna say constant, let me first define it here as a constant. Let's say row ID, this one is got by, I need to go to the form sheet, which is this one. I need to go to the cell, which is get range. This lands me to the cell and it is in B6, I believe so. This one here, which is B6. And then after that, I need to get the value. This one will give me the value in B6. Now, when you look at the requirement of our function here, uh, it requires an integer. So I need to change this. This one by default brings back a string. So I need to change it to an integer by using a function called pulse int and then close this right there. So this one returns my raw ID that I'm interested in deleting. So when I do that, I save this, then I need to link my button to this. So I go copy this function, then go to here, click on the three dots, link to that, say okay. So now my button is linked. Now I need to test if I delete, press delete, it's 127, currently is here. What happens? So let's go back here and press delete. It runs the script, that's finished. Let's go to the data. 127 has disappeared. I see there are two poles here. Let's first search for this. To delete a fun one, you need to first search for it. Press that, then press search. The record appears here, then I can press delete. 130, poll O. I come back here, the poll O has gone, they had two of them. Then maybe the last functionality I can add here is after deleting, of course you can add in other things, it gives you a message, a uh, record has been deleted. I showed you how to get that message. For example, I think I added it when we added a record, add record, I put a message here. So if you want that message, we after editing, we can also add a message here. Record has been edited, something like that. Then record has been deleted. I can put this message there. And then uh, after deleting the record, I want it to clear the fields and also after editing, I want it to clear the fields. So I, I run that function in edit. I also run it after it has given me the message right there. So let's test and see how our system is faring now. Now, if I want to delete this record, I come and say delete record has been deleted, say okay, and it goes off from here. So when I come back to 130, 130 is gone. Now I come here, say 130, maybe XX, date of joining, is that, is a permanent staff, then uh, I add the record. Record has been added, it clears my field, I search it again, 
press enter, search the record, and there it comes. Now, if I want to uh, update it, updated name, like so, can update, record has been updated. One clears it, come back here. You see it has been updated. And lastly, if I do 130, press enter, search the record, it is here, delete it, record has been deleted. So this is a fully crowd working system. It can create a record, edit a record, delete, search, and, and all those other things. I hope this has been helpful. And if so, and your phone is helpful, please like the video. Give me your comments. If you want me to do more videos like this, I'm ready to do them as well. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you have not, and see you in the next video.